Here we are at Rosalind Abbey. We're just having a quick stop. Jean's shown Jeannie this old building. From the date you can see it's very old. Uh, its colour indicates that it was once a, a royal residence. New visitors facilities, tea rooms etc. We'll get an external shot of the Abbey now. Behind these walls we have Rosalind Chapel. Uh, lovely architecture inside, but you're not allowed to take photographs inside, so there's a lot of point in going in. Uh, the Rosalind Chapel featured in that film, The Da Vinci Code, in the final scenes. So I think the girls are just having a look round and might even use the restroom facilities. You get some nice views of the countryside from a quick stop at the Rosalind Chapel. shots of the chapel itself and the new visitor centre uh, people enjoying a early morning cup of tea and a scone The girls just away into Forsyth, the bakers and butchers to get some uh, scotch pies for lunch and we're clearly just having a wonder through Peebles. So I think we'll be down the high street, see if there's any bargains. Uh, down as far as the uh, Town Hall and Church and back again and continue with our border tour. In Peebles High Street, just opposite the old Town Hall. Now houses the library and uh, community area. The high street's quite busy, the girls are away shopping, I've lost them, so I'll just stand here till they appear. Lots of nice wee individual shops here. Quite a few charity shops as well, British Heart Foundation. When a shop closes, rather than have it, have it lying vacant, they give it to a charity who opens up and sells second-hand goods and DVDs and other such bits and pieces. So it keeps the high street alive. That clock will ring on the every quarter of an hour. That's the girls thinking about doing some more shopping. They're outside the tartan shop at the bottom end of the high street, so we've wandered down the high street. Oh, just in time to hear the clock strike. 11, so we're going to get the full set of chimes. One, two, I won't carry on, but as you can gather, it's going to strike till 11. Now oh, there she goes in the shop for some more stuff. Where Robert de Bruce's heart is buried when it was brought back from the taken to rather and brought back from the Crusades following his death. His uh, body is buried in uh, 
His uh, body's buried in Dunfermline Abbey. Uh, it's quite an innocuous little burial site within the grounds of the Abbey here. Just a small plaque on the ground. Well, we've just stopped off at Melrose. The girl's there in a coffee shop. Still there, finishing off the coffee. A nice little coffee shop at the town square. I think they'll probably be doing a little bit of shopping in the high street. So there we have the, the market cross with the, the eild and hills in the background. A busy little town, Melrose. Famous for its rugby sevens, the rugby football club, rugby sevens. Uh, we'll be having a wander down the high street. Which doesn't stretch very far, but uh, it's got one or two nice little shops, and it's onwards and upwards on our tour of the Scottish borders. Melrose, there's a display of Roman artifacts that were found at the Roman fort at Trimontium, they called it, the Romans. Try for three, Montium for mountains, through three mountains, which is the three hills, the three olden hills. The fort straddled the main Roman road between Newcastle and Edinburgh and they uh, really controlled the road. Uh, that road is actually called Deer Street and ran all the way from Newcastle to Edinburgh. It still exists, although it's not been paved over or made into another road, it just currently goes through various hill farms and heathland. Uh, quite a lot of history associated with Melrose. As the girls finally finished their coffee, so of course they go left, they're going shopping, they go on the right, they're going back to the car. So left is shopping. Quite a few shops still to go down the high street. They could be here for a little while, I think. But at least they're enjoying themselves, that's the main thing. Here we are at Selkirk, just parked the car, we're going to visit the museum which uh, is very interesting because it's got lots of things in it that I remember when I was young. So Jeannie's keen to see it because she knows that her mum liked it when her mum was visiting. Here we are in an old house. The old fireplace and grate with the, the cooking iron mongery. Low ceilings, keeps the place cosy. Sideboard with the good dishes. And of course, the bed near to the fire to keep you warm. And the old, instead of having a tumble dryer or a clothes dryer, that's the old fashioned system for drying clothes. Put them through a mangle and hang them outside to dry in the wind. And here we have the insides of an old ironmonger's. Oh. Sorts of things used to buy in the early 1900s. And there's a ever attentive shopkeeper ready to serve and satisfy all your needs. And there's a pill and a potion for everything here. Well stocked ironmongers. Tools. Underneath, he's got all his latest 
household needs irons. He used to put hot coal from the fire in these irons, which produced heat and heated the base plate, which ironed the clothes. We're now at an exhibition that covers the Selkirk Common Riding, which is a bit like the Southern Linlithgow. Most border towns have got a common riding where riders ride the, the town boundaries. So here's obviously a large painting depicting the scene. And in the background we've got a television showing a video of what looks like from the 1940s or 1950s. This is Selkirk Town Square. This red box affair is where tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow is the common riding in Selkirk, and they commemorate the Royal Borough status and the Battle of Flodden, where one of the few occasions when the English defeated the Scots, someone stands up there and waves the flag that came from Flodden, Flodden sorry, to commemorate all the Selkirk men who were killed in battle, as well as the King of Scots and his large number of nobles. So it was a sorry defeat for the Scots at the Battle of Flodden. Next is the statue of Sir Walter Scott, who was the sheriff in the court at Selkirk, and also a well-known author of Kidnapped, the Waverley's Tales. What else did he do? Ivanhoe, that's another thing he did. I think the girls are away for some Selkirk panics, which is a sort of large scone type delicacy. After this, we're, uh, I think we're going to Jedburgh. So, anyway, this is Selkirk Town Square. Right. We've had a short break at the caravan because we're passing anyway, so we arrived, make ourselves comfortable. Uh, Jeannie's clearly made herself comfortable because she's got her shoes off, wiggling her toes, <laughs> and more importantly, eating her scotch pie with a cup of tea. Brilliant. So I won't actually photograph, I won't video her eating because that's a bit... That's a bit nasty. But anyway, she seems quite comfortable. And I'll now go outside. I'm very happy. Do you have well, yes, you that's her in the side. background saying very, she's very, very happy. happy. She's very happy. So I'll go outside and have a puff my pipe because it's a nice day. Very nice day. Very, very warm. We're having a short break at Jedburgh Castle and Museum. Jedburgh Castle Jail and Museum to get a photo opportunity across the town because Jeannie's got a friend in Illinois who originally whose family originally came from Jedburgh so I think she just wants to make him jealous. I'm standing in front of Jedburgh Castle Jail and Museum. I'm standing at the portcullis looking down over the town. And that street there and goes all the way to the bottom to the High Street and to the Mary Queen of Scots House. And over there behind the trees, which unfortunately you can't see, is the ruined Jedburgh Abbey which was raised to the ground by English invading forces 
hundreds and hundreds of years ago. You certainly wouldn't want us to return. Blue Bears. Blue Bears from upstairs, you're going to have a look. The entrance to the jail, I think in the old days, was protected by two cannon. One, two, and if you go closely, it tells you it's Jedburgh Foundry. And they were made in May 18. 1867 1867 that's what you call a bit of history Jean and Ginny are actually in the jail I think they're using the facilities hope they don't get themselves locked in a cell at night and I've got to go up the road myself and have pie and chips and fatty foods and sugar and my tea and things uh, well that would be terrible so here we are still in Jedburgh we're at the Mary Queen of Scots house the girls I think are going to go in yes well worth a visit I'll let the girls go in and I'll show you round the grounds and I'll catch them up inside uh, as we said, this is Mary Scott's, Queen of Scots, Mary Queen of Scots house in Jedburgh. It's where she stayed when she was a administering justice at the, the courts. It's part of her realm. Very palatial apparently. We'll have a tour inside, but lovely building. And they made it into a very attractive visitor centre. But even sitting in the gardens on a nice cool day, a nice warm day like today, it's indeed a pleasure. Here we have portraits of various royal personages in one of the many rooms in Mary Queen of Scots House. Uh, some husbands and lovers and there was our nemesis John Knox who used to pound the Protestant cause in the Reformation quite a sinister looking character the question is would you have supported Mary's cause to be crowned Queen of England and there we got a little this is a nice card. Puppety thing. Because it has oh, that right is nice. Right, so there it is. Isn't that a nice one? Yeah. Yeah. And there's two I slots. Yes, nice. you yeah, want her to be Queen of England. The, the music one. plays. Yep. And That's she gets nice. crowned. If, however, you put oh, yeah. your coin in the no slot, you come back then you she's sitting there, there, there quite happily. The music oh, plays. Oh, and an axe oh, comes yeah. across and her head gets chopped off. Here we are entering Kelso, crossing the bridge over the River Tweed. It's a very picturesque little market town. We're in the car obviously, that's the reason for the shaky pictures. On the right we have another abbey, again in ruins, caused by the English during their riotous raping and pillaging phase. I think we're just looking for a car park space. The reason we're struggling now is we're on cobbles. Uh, there's nothing 
facing you, Gene, instead of problem facing you. There's the town square, which is currently under construction, and they're relaying the cobbles. Let's cut back over there again. found one, so I think we'll just stop them here, just for a brief look and photo opportunity, because Jeannie's been going daft with her camera. So here we are in Kelso Square. Some lovely buildings in Kelso. There's the town hall. That's the square where there's various festive activities during the year, but as we said, they're relaying the cobbles. Cobbles seem to be a very old fashioned idea, but they last for hundreds of years. They last a lot longer than traditional tar marking or other metallic surfaces. So from the look of the fact the boots up, I would say we're having a coffee. We're just having a short stop uh, for a photo opportunity in Coldstream, which is on the Scottish side of the River Tweed. Uh, we've stopped at a lovely garden area, which is a memorial garden. Uh, it commemorates those members of the Coldstream Guards who have been killed in action. The Coldstream Guards being a member of the Queen's Guards. And there's another memorial down there, which is devoted to a young girl who was murdered just outside Coldstream by a serial murderer, child murderer, who's now serving multiple life sentences for murder. So there's a plaque in memory of our sister Guy Susan Maxwell who was murdered in 1982, just on the bridge on the border. At the memorial garden. And it's a lovely garden, well kept garden. But there are the girls up beside the monument to the Coalstream Guards. The girls looking over the River Tweed. On the far bank of the Tweed, that's the left hand side is England, on the right hand side is Scotland. We're not going into England, we're just staying on the Scottish side off the border, because Jeannie doesn't want to go into England, quite right so, because it isn't so nice, and the air doesn't smell so clean, and they speak on a funny accent, so there you are, and if you were to go to England, you'd cross the bridge, which is there, halfway across the bridge is a sign that says welcome to England, and if you're heading north, it says welcome to Scotland. So there's the stone for the Coldstream Guards, which is a Queen's Guard Regiment, which was raised in Coldstream in 1660 apparently, which is many centuries ago. So he marched in 1660 to restore King Charles II to the throne, hence he became very pally with the royals and was made a Royal Guards Division, or a Guards Regiment.
here we are at uh, South Queensbury, just under the bridges, going for a meal at the Hawes Inn. There's the Fourth Road Bridge, and in the background, the okay. columns for the new Fourth Road Bridge. So we'll have two road bridges and one rail bridge. And there's the girls making their way into the Hawes Inn. Pub for our evening meal after a busy day in the Scottish borders. The noise you hear is a train crossing the bridge. I think when my uncle Stuart, when we did his ashes, there were about 15 of us here. Is it in this bit? Um, yeah. But it could usually look a nice long fire. Yeah, I think we used to meet you.